Hello! In this short video, I will show you how to use application to generate the code for your backend services. So let's start. I will go to application and the first thing I need to do is to create a service. So I will click on add resource, choose service, and what I need to do is to give my service a name. So the service we're going to create today will be a service for event management. So we're going to have two simple models like customer and event. We're going to need a database, we're going to need the API, authentication, authorization. So let's see how we do it. Let's start by giving our service a name, event management service. Let's continue. The next thing would be to create a repository to hold our code. So let's create repository. We'll call that events and I will create a repository. Right now I'm creating uh, the repository on GitHub, but application supports using any other Git providers like Bitbucket, GitLab, AWS, CodeCommit, and so on. Let's continue. Uh, application allows you to choose what type of APIs you want to use for your services. So GraphQL API, REST API, together with Swagger for documentation, and you can even use to generate an admin UI as a starting point for a React client admin that allow you to start working with your backend. Let's keep everything selected and continue. We can choose between working with monorepo or polyrepo. I will choose to use monorepo for this example and I will ask application to push the code uh, of my services into the apps folder on my repo. I can choose what type of database I want for my service. For this example, we will use Postgres, but we can also use Mongo, MySQL, MS SQL Server, and even other type of database can be supported using custom plugins. And we will see what plugins are later in this demo. Uh, we will start with an empty data models because we want to see how we create data models with application. And we'll ask application to include the authentication module with our service. So we can have identity management for authentication, authorization, and everything uh, around it. So let's go and create our data model. So we do get the first data model called user out of the box because we choose application to manage identities, uh, but we don't have to use that data model. If we need it, we can customize that. For our example, we go and create our first uh, uh, data model called customer. And we're going to describe our customer with a few fields. Let's use first name, last name, and fun. And let's go and create our second entity. We'll call that event. And our event going to have a date, name, and the relation to customer. You can see that uh, application try to guess uh, what type of data type you want for your field, but of course you can change that. So customer is relation to customer, and name is a single line text, and date is date time, and so on. So that's everything we need in order to start generating our code. Of course, we can do some other stuff in application, like setting permission, roles, and a lot of other stuff. Uh, but for this example, let's see what we get. So we'll just add here a commit message, initial commit, and click on commit. And this is where application starts generating the code. So we see that application uh, runs in the background, generating the code based on all the data model we, we given it and some uh, a configuration that we started with, for example, the type of database, APIs, and so on. This process should take about 15 to 20 seconds. Once it's ready, you will get all the code to Git repository, and at that given time, you can do whatever you want with the code. You can go and customize it, you can go and deploy it, build on top of it, change it, and at, given, at any given time, you can also go back to application to make changes on the code. If you want to add more data models, if you want to add other plugins, for example, if you go and look on plugins while the code is generating, we see that we have plugins, for example, for Kafka, for GitHub Action, for MongoDB, for uh, Redis Cache or Helm Chart, 3 Open OpenAI integration, and so on. So, application have uh, an open source uh, uh, ecosystem of plugins where the community generates plugin. Application generates plugin for the community and even organization can generate uh, and build their own plugins. Uh, so let's go back to, to see our uh, uh, code generation process. It's done and we see that the code is ready on GitHub. We will just click on this URL to go to the pull request. We see that we got one pull request with 267 files, everything we need for our service. For the sake of this demo, we will just confirm and merge everything to master. So let's have a look on the code that was generated for us by application. 
So we see that we have the apps folder and in the apps folder we see that we have the event management service admin which is the react admin that was generated for us in order to use the APIs and this is the service with the APIs and let's go into the service and let's see what we have here so we see that in the root folder we have files like the docker files, readme, docker compose, package.json everything I need in order to start using the service let's go and look into the prisma folder and we see that we have the schema for uh, prisma with all the data models, the fields, the configuration Let's have a look on our uh, one of the data models uh, folders like customer and we see that we have the customer service with um, actions like count, find many, find one, create, update, delete and even find events for customer find events and if we will go to the other side we will see that we have event get customer and let's have a look on the customer find many args you can see that the code is generated with everything you all you need in order to start running uh, filtering, searching, ordering, pagination, everything's come out of the box. But what happens if you want to change the code? What happens if you want to customize the code? Of course, as a developer, you can go clone the repository and customize it, just like any other code you have. And at any given time, if you want, go back to application, make another pull request, make another change, get a new uh, a set of configuration, files, data models, plugin, everything you want, and keep working in that way continuously between custom code with your own tools, VS Code or any other ID, and application to generate all the code that you don't want to write on your own. Thank you for watching. Have a nice day.